This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart moments. You converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life. I feel like you really talk about this a lot. About struggling to forget a heartbreak. Is there any reason? Is it from your work? Have you noticed that people struggle a lot with it? Yes, a lot of people are hung up uh -huh. on what ended, uh -huh. but they did not end it. Oh, the thing ended, Yes, but I did not end it. Yes. What am I doing? Am I praying and fasting for what am I doing? A lot of theatrics, but you're hung up in between. <laughs> Let me explain, because the first step to yeah. get over something that broke your heart but you are unable to get past it, is to unlearn the obsession. Now, let me explain the psychology of, of obsession. You cannot be obsessed with a person who is present. You usually get obsessed with a person who is not available. Really? Yes, you don't obsess with a person who is available emotionally, intellectually, physically. You cannot obsess over that person. You can appreciate, care, love them, cherish, but you cannot obsess. That obsess, thinking, longing, craving, boom, yeah is always from, for a person who is distant and unreachable, unavailable. Obsession requires distance and a void. So let me come. <laughs> the are, you, are, you, are you saying that I think more about the person who is distant? Than they exist in your life. They exist in your mind more than they exist in your life. Oh my. Yes. So okay. this is what happens. When a person leaves your life, you build them up to be this ideal person. You have had people saying they prefer long distance relationships. That's another version of just desiring the distance of the mirage than the present and the real and the human. Human people have weaknesses and expectations. Mm. You have to do things for them. But the fantasy does not have expectations and it is perfect. It's ideal. They do what I want. They always talk to me the right way. They handle me the right way. And they, you can make do you know a fantasy can be as real as a person in your mind? Your mind does not know the difference between imagination and real experience. It doesn't it know. That's why okay. our Lord said when you kill a person in your heart like you've killed them. Because you can actually, the intention, you can derive the same feelings by just playing it in your mind. Those who watch pornography start by watching it in the screen. Later they start watching it in their mind because yeah. it gets planted in the mind. Yeah. And they get the same sensations. Yeah. Over time, they want to do that in real life to get a stronger sensation. They started here, that sensation once there, it's the same thing. If you know how the mind operates, you'll understand that an obsession requires a distance, unreachable, so that you can imagine, feel the fantasy, feel the distance, feel the gap, and fall in love with that thing that bears the same name with that person, but it's not that person. Wow. Obsession already signify, signify, signifies distance, detachment, and availability. Always remember that. Mm. Anytime you find yourself obsessing, it's because the person you're obsessing is not reachable. You know what I've remembered? One time a lady called me for prayers, and I used to host a show that was for prayers. Yes. So she called me and she was saying, she was really crying, she was saying, my husband, is in a stroke so he's in a coma mm. and i'm not allowed to see him because the lady he left me for is the one by his side i thought how many levels of heartbreak is that yes already he left her for someone and then he got into a stroke and she's in pain because she can't see him very good. And she cannot accept that he already left. Yeah. And she's lucky that maybe there was money to be fought over. And if he dies, somebody was going to get money. But if usually this, those men have no money, when they fall sick, the clan they throws them back to you to take yeah. care of your sick thing. Oh, if it okay. recovers, I may take it back. But yeah. for now, yeah. we are saying when you're obsessed, she was obsessed imagining him to be who they once were. 
who the ones who are yeah. to do. So why you can't get over this person is because you've created an image of them that is so idealized and you keep falling, having sex with them, having moments with them, having, oh. you have experiences with a fantasy of that person. That's why you can't get over them. And those good moments you had, now you have brought them and magnified them. And you are getting goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with goosebumps. Complete. Hey. And chills. Hey. And then the yearning becomes more tormenting. And you want something, a release. So you can get a sex toy and imagine it's them. Oh my God. You can keep a closet full of his clothes. Imagine he's still around. You can do something that represents the woman. Keep her photos. Just <laughs> her photos. Um, one of the artists, I'm trying to remember whether it was Angelo, one of the artists of the previous years, mm -hmm. drew images that were so good, they became, van they, they, they were shoplifted the most. Mm -hmm. And when, sh when he drew Michelangelo, it was Michelangelo, mm -hmm. he was, when he drew Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. male guards were fired for having indecent relationship with the drawings. <laughs> <laughs> they have a fetish with a drawing. Mona Lisa. Michelangelo would take time with his work. Yeah. When I learned concepts of mastery from Robert Greene, he quoted those, some of those masters and their techniques. Mm -hmm. When he drew the, the Last Supper, mm -hmm. Michelangelo couldn't find who to put for Judas. He couldn't find the right face mm -hmm. for Judas. Mm -hmm. The normal artist would sketch anything, okay? Yeah, yeah. Not Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. He needed a realistic thing. Mm -hmm. So when he needed the mother of Jesus, he went to mass in the morning to try and find people in a prayerful expression, to try and find the ideal image. <laughs> the ideal image. And they did not have cameras, we just scribble with his pencil. Yeah. <laughs> so he would scribble that, that idea, that idea. Yeah. It took so long when he finally finished it, people saw what he was working on. Okay. I've just remembered I could, the, the Mona Lisa was drawn by Leonardo da Vinci. Mm, okay. mm. But Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo will confuse you because of what they shone in their generations. Yeah. But one thing I learned about them is if people could obsess of just what they drew, and today people can just download your photos and they're keeping it as a screen safe, and you have nothing going on. Yeah. Obsession operates by picking reminders and mementos of that person and building them to all this and yeah. convincing yourself that there's a future, there's a possibility, there's a real. And the contrast is, if that person actually comes to you, the, la the obsession dies. What you thought was love dies. If they actually come to your life, you lose interest. I, I don't judge me. <laughs> So just after my marriage, I joined this group uh, that trusts God for reconciliation of marriage indefinitely, like until the day it happens. So there are people in that group who've been waiting for 20 years. <sighs> Others have been waiting for 30 years. And it's a group. Actually, I got so, I, I got traumatized just from reading people's stories. And I left. <laughs> So, but one, one of the things that used to recur as a message in that group was people were saying that when he's away, I long for him. When he comes back, I don't, I don't want him. I'm not happy without him and I'm not happy with him. Exactly. Because when he's away, you are in love with the image you're built in your head of him. When he's present, you're dealing with the reality of him that has flaws and realities of how he hurts you. Yeah. And all the reminders and the presence and he has expectations. Yeah. All right. I want you to know, one lady told me categorically, she wanted a, a, a man, but she didn't want to be the main woman because she didn't want a man in her life every day. <laughs> <laughs> a man who stops by Tuesday evening. Hey. And she was just, a selfish woman wanted maintenance at no cost, yeah. at a very low cost. She wanted a man who pays the price of her husband without her paying the price of her wife. So there are people who don't want, they want this without the other. They don't mm. want to pick okay. just a few things yeah. from marriage. Mm. 
And I told her, you think you can find a stable relationship from those kind of men? Can you get out of your clouds? Yeah. <laughs> can you get out of your clouds? Yeah. Why will you have only you and not ten others? Yeah. Those kind of men are philanderers. Yeah. So you're just joining a life of flings. Yeah. All the best. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We are saying, when that person you get, they usually lose interest because when, when you're obsessed with a person, it's yeah. usually when they are a mirage unattainable, mm. out of reach. Mm. Really, what you're, what you're obsessed, that void you're falling in love with is resonating with another void inside of you. Oh. You are falling in love with, the, with, with, with out of touch because you're also out of touch with yourself. Mm. You don't know yourself, you don't love yourself, you don't feel yourself present and lovable, and you don't feel your beauty. You don't feel how you don't you don't have a sense of how special you are. Mm. So you are escaping that discomfort of feeling unlovable to going to love a person who is unreachable. Mm. And many people say they are praying and waiting for the return. It's a religious explanation of an obsession. It's a psychological problem being covered up spiritually. It's a refusal to accept and move on. And they waste their life. That person may come back to just come and die. Yeah. Uh, the foundation for that group was the part of the Bible that says if a woman who, if a woman divorces and remarries, she's like living in a perennial state of adultery. Yeah, they usually pick one element of scripture. Remember that? Please read the whole Bible yourself so that you can get, when people say God hates divorce, he also hates ungodly marriages. People go into marriage with sin and they want God, they start quoting God when they're already inside, when he was nowhere, when they were going in. He yeah. can only hate the divorce when he's part of the uh -huh. marriage. Okay. Common sense. Your God is not that unreasonable, okay? Uh, Good news for you. <laughs> he yes. is not some computer that was programmed. Yes. <laughs> he looks at what are we talking about. Neither does he want wow. you to suffer until you die. Neither does he want to be abused and kicked around. He has mentioned in many places that like adultery is obvious yeah. ground for divorces. Mentioned yeah. in many places. So yeah. we are saying many people marry before they awaken and know who they are. But they start using religion to tie themselves to that because they are, not, they are unable to accept. In fact, some people, sometimes those men or women just re despise you and walk out because you seem to have no options in life. Mm. People respect you and they know you can't be played with. Human mm. psychology is reverse. Mm. Only when you, you cannot be um, contained mm. or, or abused or forced do people fear offending you. But when there is no consequence at all because I can't go anywhere, divorce is not an option. They will feel under love. There is no consequence. Mm. Never let people think they can, there is no consequence. Mm. Let people know that you will be happy first whether you are married or not. Yeah. You'll be at peace first. You'll be alive. I'll live the life I've been given. I will not begin yeah. to exist in suffering every day because of a person. It's yeah. like I'm making the person my God, you know. Mm. So we are saying to unlearn the obsession is to realize you're not in love with the person. You're not craving for them. Mm -hmm. You're craving for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a void of not knowing who you are. Oh. It's a void that is crying. It's a yearning to be seen by you, to be acknowledged by you, to be loved by you, to be validated by you. The cure for obsession is to say I'm worthy. I'm stable, I'm good, I'm beautiful. I'm, I'm such a good guy, I'm a gift to any lady, I'm a miracle. If I come to a lady's life, I am honest, I mean well, I'm committed. Whoever loses me will regret it, now or later. Whatever, I don't care how long the madness lasts, but when it goes away, they will regret it. <laughs> you know, yes. people may live in insults when they're mad. When their madness wears, wears off. Yeah. <laughs> we know when people are in that infatuation, like they have temporary insanity. Mm. They're infl inflamed with another person. They're trying to marry. Even when the whole extended family, like the story you're telling me, yeah. has said you out of your mind. We are none of that. We are not part of that. They yeah. still go ahead because they're obsessed. Yeah. Many times you realize... If you, if you just come back, it sounds very, after we explain the whole cycle of obsession, the psychology of obsession to a person who is unable to, to release a person, mm -hmm. and we give them the cure, the pill now to swallow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes doctors, because they depending on your biology, they don't explain how the drug is working. They just yeah. ask you to swallow. Yeah. 
Psychologists, we don't have that privilege, okay? You have to. <laughs> <laughs> you have to unpack it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Your doctor tells you to do one times three and don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> it you guys have to, to it, explain. It, 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 for us. <laughs> you so, have work. <laughs> so the mantra mm. of I am worthy wears off obsession because you realize, ah, I'm here. I'm okay. The obsession was asking, where am I? Anybody can see me? Am I worthy? Am I lovable? Am I beautiful? <laughs> It was, yeah. a, it was a yearning to be seen. Now when you, once you see yourself, many people are obsessed also and don't admire the image in the mirror. When you learn to admire your image in the mirror, mm -hmm. to dress yourself up, to pamper yourself, you begin to feel a sense of pride. The second solution is to recapture your sense of pride. To recapture your sense of purpose. Pride, purpose, and the idea of destiny and a mm -hmm. meaning and a task in life brings a sense of, I have a short time to perform a certain role and I will not waste it. <laughs> A sense of urgency keeps you moving. So you regain your pride, yes. your purpose, your momentum. And you say, a year has gone, I can't waste another year. <laughs> that was enough crying. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I may like you, but see, looking at the time. Some people need to say, 20 years have gone, I can't exactly. be here for them. Do you know those people tell you, ah, they died, we are married, that is abuse, abuse. That is because they don't have this sense of mission. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they're asleep. Oh, I've been, been cheating with so I many know. women. Every time you know, goes away, comes in the morning, I wonder what do people, you, love has come. What are you talking about? 25 years. When you have a sense of mission and something to accomplish, lady, yeah. some things just don't have a place in your life. You they tell won't. them, my feelings won't, but my destiny can't allow it. Yeah. My feelings may desire to play around, mm. but when you look at, I look at the clock, you know, my wife likes working in charitable organizations mm -hmm. to donate. Although she does, even when she had nothing, she would go and donate. Oh. <laughs> that little of what she has. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, that light that comes when you're sure the child that she'll stay in school, that she'll eat today, that they'll be okay, that they'll find a mattress to sleep on, that they'll the need that was at least for this time, or somebody has come and lifted the moods, that is everything to me. Mm. And to allow a person to depress me until I can't show up for those kids is a no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, do, do, do you see it? <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes it's not even those kids in charity. It's someone depressing you until you can't show up for your <laughs> child. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. And you're, up, you're shouting at your child. You are abusing your child. You know. Yeah. So, it's when you remember what you are here to do. Yeah. Just remember it. <laughs> no, I can't do this. Mm. That's why you walk away when your legs are, are protesting against your heart, your, your eyes yes. are trying to look, and you walk away. Yes. Because duty is calling, and yes. I must show up. Yes. That song that says, when duty calls, you must not be found wanting there. When your mission calls, when your destiny calls, you must not be found wanting there. Because very soon I'll give an account of the years I was given. Yeah. And I don't know how soon they will run out. Yeah. I have to do everything so that when I'm given an account, I'm not ashamed. Yeah. I can say, I've done my 30 years of service. Yeah. And I'm glad to see, uh, maybe I could have done more, but I'm, mm. I, I'm, I'm not ashamed of what I've done. Mm. I, I think, is it this show I was saying, I don't, I don't wish to repeat any part of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I see some people try to remain forever young. I wish you well. I have no problem with you. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I know at 28, I was both youthful, but there were also many problems. That was sweet yes. and bitter. Yes, yes, yes. The uncertainty about career, of yeah. who you will marry, whether you will be liked, whether you succeed, whether you will live to be 40. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, every new birthday is just a surprise. So, I didn't know I could live this. Thank you. Yeah. So, I don't want to you to take me back mm. to the same problems. That, you know, the more I'm, age is coming with more money, more wisdom, more connection, more. I'm seeing the end near. I'm happy I'll finish well. Let me tell you, <laughs> I'm happy we are here today, but I don't want to repeat anything. Mm. I don't want to delay, or I want to look younger, or uh, boys forever, 40. Nothing. Nonsense. I'll do my part of every year and enjoy all of it mm. and go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Mission gives you that sense. Every year should count because I only have one of that year. Yeah. Only 2024. Only this year. Yeah. Only recently we were talking about 2020. Yeah. While you are saying, 2020, COVID, pop! Now, <laughs> so COVID.
it cut when will it go people die like this do you know so and so yes die buried died people could not attend funerals of their parents their loved ones that was a wave past do you want to repeat 2020 no <laughs> so why would you want a person to waste a year that had so many difficulties why would you want a person to make that year become in your calendar just blank when your birthday comes remember i always tell you it's better to evaluate your life mm. on your birthday it's easier yeah. when there's not so much hype mm. many people don't become conscious on their birthday they drink themselves unconscious they go partying mm. i want you to wake up use the, that day to awaken mm. it's good to celebrate but don't celebrate before you commemorate before you take stock yeah. what if this is my last birthday yeah one guy was saying look what i've done for myself like, you fool today it's required of you yes. <laughs> yes. So, what if you hear today this is your last year wrap up it's a wrap and it's one way there's no return yeah my point here is to say another thing that you unlearn people is when you remember like uh this guy frost there's a a uh, 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 code frost poet mm -hmm. is it robert frost so but the mm -hmm. second name just frost yeah he said when he stood he was riding home with his horse and he stood somewhere and looking at the forest he said the woods are deep and inviting but i have promises to keep and places to go before i sleep wow this affair with obsessing over your ex may be deep and inviting yes but you have places to go and promises to keep before yes. you sleep yes 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 the night is falling yes you have places to go with a short time yeah and promises to keep to yourself to your goals to your dreams to your loved ones promises yeah. to keep before you sleep yeah that alone leaves sometimes you leave the pain unresolved okay when you just yeah. remember you have to go sometimes you don't have closure or last conversation or yeah. let's be sure or can we try <laughs> yeah because six months are gone guys i just can't do this anymore deleted blocked moved on yes <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm, been yeah. six months yeah and necessity dictates mm. I've, even take job transfer to take you far away so that you can rule out you even start other you go to church away i don't know the other side you do things in your life to force yourself yeah. to open new chapters yes hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you've caught me off guard with the end of that <laughs> with the end of that show um i think it's the sometimes you don't even look for closure yeah i, I was in something where every closure conversation was a reopener <laughs> to something else <laughs> to the repeat of what i'm trying to close exactly so deleted blocked moved on <laughs> was exactly. necessary exactly yeah okay sawa let me read something from before you say i do a wonderful book by benjamin but uh mm, she's i I'm, I'm just looking i want to go for yes. the nail on the head She's just disturbed. She will calm down after a while. He's just going through a phase. He has childhood trauma. Just hang in there and give them some time. Of course, self-discipline is like a sculpture made of stone that one must hew out slowly and painstakingly. Self-discipline is the DNA of character and identity. Without it, a person is like a cloud without water, carried, uh, carried about by the winds, trees without fruit, pulled up by the roots um why I, I i really like this is <clears throat> i guess one one thing we rationalize our exes about we say oh it's a childhood trauma oh it's it's he's a child of a single mother yes yeah many people will never to grow the diagnosis of their problems yeah and i don't know why we think because we understand lily's problems then we can solve them you may understand my problem so well. I was just abandoned by my mother. Imagine I was being beaten up. I was not I was left yeah. I was left with my auntie for five years. The first ten years I, was, I went yeah. to you may understand me so well. Does yeah. that mean you make me change? No. Many people use their diagnosis as a defense yes. against accountability. Yes. You know what I went through? 
Uh, you have to understand. Who oh, I'm still trying to work on it is 10 years down the line. You are 35. You are 40. I know. You're still talking about your mother. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and uh, Ezekiel, this guy said, you can't continue quoting your background. Past 30, you are, you the, are the background. background. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He meant you are standing on by yourself. Yes. And whatever you are doing, we have to blame you. Yeah. So we are saying, the thing here is, what we are trying to discuss there is don't take your understanding of people's problems to become a condoning yes. of an acceptable behavior. Yeah. I understand that your father was drunk, he beat you up, neglected you, refused to pay fees for you, said you're good for nothing, but he's no longer the one dictating your life anymore. Yeah. And I want you to be careful with people who start by confessing, oh, I had a difficult childhood. We should not be talking about difficult childhood. Mm -hmm. We should be talking about how you have dealt with it. Yeah. So tell me, thank you for that analysis of your problems. Yeah. Now, give me analysis of the solutions. Yes, yes. When are you planning to be present, emotional, understanding, present? When are you, how, when are you coming up to that place? Because that's the kind of a wife I want. Yes, yes. I don't want a wife who screams because she was screamed at. Yeah. Abandons because she was abandoned. Yeah. Rejects because she was rejected. Mm. Don't just stop at solution, at problems. Go to solutions, yes. <coughs> Before you say I do, if you're not married, please don't get married before reading this book. It's so insightful. It shows you all the cracks and croonies. Are they called croonies? Yes. Yeah. That you need to delve into before you get married. www.benjaminzuluglobal.com is where to get it and all of his other work. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart moments. We are converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life.